Hi, my name is Marie Norton. I am Fedora's Community Action and Impact Coordinator. And here with me is Alexandra. Would you like to introduce yourself? So I'm a member of Fedora Console. So my position is not to do anything, but be part of it. <laughs> awesome. I mean, I think you're involved in a little bit more than the council, but yes, that's the title we have, I guess. Um, I actually started to go Fedora in like 2013. I feel all reminiscy from that Fedora project, uh, uh, Fedora project leader session. <laughs> all right. So um, we're here today to talk about the survey. So we ran our first annual contributor survey in the month of June, and uh, it went really well. So how did that come to be? So uh, Council, Fedora Council issue one on Peugeot was a survey. Yeah, that, that's uh, the, the point I added. Like we had uh, the issue for Fedora survey filed as the issue number one on Fedora console project, which was seven years ago. And the issue was filed by Matthew Miller, I think when he was naive and just, just started his role as <laughs> FPL and he filed an issue like, we want to know more about our community. And uh, yeah, we revived this conversation. For me personally, the uh, reason to revive this conversation was the recent debate about the default uh, text editor. We will talk a bit more about it later. But yeah, the, uh, this topic was revived and we, uh, we started to think about how to actually do that. And then uh, with Marie help, <laughs> mm -hmm. we got many teams involved and Marie, you can cover this maybe. Sure, sure. Yeah. So. Actually, Alexandra wrote up a draft like right away and, and everyone was like, yeah, let's just pull the trigger and do it. And I was like, hold on a second, everybody. Let's try to figure out what we're trying to accomplish with this. First of all, people, I mean, get offered to take surveys all the time. We do surveys within Fedora and CPE does surveys. So we wanted to make sure that we weren't like just sending out a survey that wasn't going to get us the answers that we wanted. So. We took a step back and we said, okay, you know, we're not even quite experts on this. So let's like take a minute to figure out all the different things that we want to learn and get some input. So we spent some time documenting what we were trying to learn and we, we checked in with multiple stakeholders on that. So we worked with the revamp team, community outreach revamp um, to help guide us because they're the ones that are kind of up to date on the outreach efforts in Fedora. Um, we also reached out to the Mindshare Committee to help us review, and obviously the council was kind of like stewarding it all along. Um, but then we were also like, okay, how are we going to get people to take this? <laughs> um, you know, sometimes we all need a little bit of incentive. So, uh, of course, one of our first ideas was badges. So we needed to um, coordinate a badge. And then I was like, you know, I think we need to put a banner out there. I don't know who came up with the idea first. But we we're like the banner is the way to go. And actually, with the help of a newly formed website and ops team, we got a banner up on five or six of our websites, and we also got it up on the community blog, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that was another team that was like pretty instrumental in making sure that this was going to get the exposure that it needed, and we were going to get those responses. So we had a ton of people helping, and obviously, uh, we also had. CPE helping us with Fedora infrastructure, getting those banners up as well. Don't want to leave them out. Um, so we had over 1,200 responses total, and we had 800 complete responses. It was like 798 the day before, and there was 800, and we were like, what? Okay, I guess we're going with this. So uh, we had 800 complete responses. So we were thinking around 500, and we guessed that from registrations we had seen at the release parties, et cetera, et cetera. Like, okay, we think it's gonna be around this number. So we were thrilled to see it at um, 800. And so I think one of the things we're definitely very excited about is running it again next year, right? Um, and seeing what kind of comparisons we can do. That'll, that's gonna provide us some very interesting information on the progress that we make based on this. Okay. so who responded to the survey. So people could choose multiple things in this situation, but um, this is our breakdown. 
it was mostly users that uh, there could be users and these things, <laughs> but we had a lot of users actually responding to this survey. So that was awesome. Um, and then the next biggest is going to be package maintainer. I think that that's no surprise to anyone uh, that that would be the next one up. And then I think it's going to be QA, also important testing. And right around there, that's Ask Fedora. Uh, probably is the support there, documentation, infrastructure. So those are uh, also outreach was pretty high. So it was a nice distribution to see. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about community related insights. And then Alexandra is going to go ahead with some of the more <laughs> technical and coding related insights. So the first thing we want I want to just highlight was we had an accessibility score of 3.6 out of 5, which is not the greatest. I think we can improve that. I would like to see that number over four next time around. So uh, we divided up the responses by contributors and users. And unsurprisingly, contributors do find it easier to find um, those docs, resources, and people that they need to find. Um, and for those who are having trouble with it, searchability of the content is uh, the main issue. So I think we can do some concrete things to probably improve that uh, over the next year. Um, next thing I wanted to point out was um, we asked questions around who do folks go to for swag and event support. Um, and the top three answers were local regional ambassadors, which is actually a very great answer. Um, local user groups, which is like makes sense but okay hmm and then the council which i'm like definitely not <laughs> um so uh oh there's some commentary in there i'm trying i'm trying not to get distracted by it but um basically the answer the correct answer in this is the, is the mindshare committee <laughs> um the mindshare committee is the one who improves event swag support all of that kind of stuff so they were ranked fifth or something out of all of these. So that is definitely a place in which we want to improve the visibility of Mindshare and what it does. And we actually see that in other places and through data that people don't really know exactly what the Mindshare committee is or does. For example, elections, we have a lot less folks um, voting in the Mindshare election than FESCO or council. So uh, we know that the visibility is not the greatest on the Mindshare. So we're also doing, we're doing things like the presentation we did here at Nest, which was informational. So hopefully we can promote that around. And, and, and we talked a lot about um, how people can be involved. Like it can really, like anyone could be involved in Mindshare. I'm not going to go off on that too much, but anyway. Um, and that also if people are reaching the Mindshare Committee, they're more likely to reach out to individuals instead of uh, the group as a whole, which understandable. People know me, people know other folks on the committee, so they'll go to them. But we're, we're all um, doing a lot. We're all doing a lot for Fedora. So if people knew this process um, a little bit better, it would be ideal for us. So on to the next. Uh, so we did want to test a little bit about or try to get an understanding of the knowledge of community standards of behavior. Like, do people feel comfortable? Do feel people feel like they can um, speak up? Do people feel um, like there's things holding them back, et cetera, et cetera? So we did get, um, I think that on this question there was, the highest rating of like people were saying, I feel comfortable. So people are feeling comfortable with the code of conduct being in place. But we received commentary that there's so many different channels that people feel like it's a challenge to really enforce that code of conduct. And I would agree as the person who deals with the code of conduct. <laughs> um, it's definitely tough. We are only a couple people and um, we're thinking and looking and planning about what we can do about that. So we're looking to training. Um, we're working on a set of moderator guidelines that's gonna go across all of Fedora. So that's something I'm drafting and we'll put forth to the community and you know it'll be a conversation um, when the time comes. But 
these are issues that we're kind of already aware of. Um, and then uh, last but not least, do contributors feel recognized or appreciated? And we got a 4.32 out of 5 for how likely are you to recommend? Oh, oh, he, Matthew's breaking down stats for us as we speak, I think. How likely are you to recommend friends uh, contribute to the Fedora project? So that that's an amazing stat right there. Pretty happy about that. Um, that means that there's a good community culture like overall, even though we have you know, things to improve upon, um, the experience that folks are having is overall net positive. So that's it for me for now. And just let me know when you need the next slide, okay? So yeah, I'm going to continue with some uh, more like uh, data uh, about the other questions we have. I obviously cannot cover everything. So I want to cover some maybe most like uh, typical Holy War topics. Uh, it's not to trigger the Holy Wars, but it will maybe in some, in some places, but it's just to give you the idea of, of any data we got and also like to, as, as a teaser for what can be done later. So uh, the whole survey story for me has started with this nano versus VI uh, conversation on mailing list. That's why I one of the issues I wanted to check was like how many. Uh, yeah, for, for me this whole nano Vim defo as a default editor uh, conversation uh, triggered the chain of thoughts. Was the thoughts were like, do we really know what people are using? And what is the most comfortable tool and what is the most common tool and, and how, how this all, all things work in the community and how do we get the data like this? So is the naive attempt here was to, to do a survey and the obvious question like what's our preferred text editor? And you can see that uh, I, I also separated these questions for question to a small tech uh, edits and the ID qu type of question. And probably not surprising that VI, uh, Vim and NeoVim and whatever you uh, flavor you use actually wins with uh, much, uh, like with a lot of uh, people cho choosing it over others. And yeah, probably also not surprising that Nano wins over Emacs, though I had hoped for some slightly different result there. But uh, it's uh, not something which we can interpret exactly right now. I think that, that we're maybe more interested in the trend and to compare these results with next year, because then we will see that if is a change of defaults changed the way people used the editors or not, like what was the impact and what it can be. So uh, covering this original question, let's move on to the next slide with the next question about Fedora modules. This was also interesting for me because of course, we had a lot of controversy and the conversations on Fedora development list about modularity are not always fun. Let's say it like that. Uh, but uh, this was interesting for me to see the result that uh, we do have a usage of Fedora modules. It's uh, it's not like more, uh, not really a lot, but it's uh, really visible. And uh, we have uh, almost the same amount of people uh, recommending mo using models in Fedora. So there is like really, uh, it doesn't look as grim as it might be for some people. It's an interesting technology, which st I think still worth looking into. And if we go to the next slide, uh, also like some very obvious questions of which desktop environment we use. GNOME, of course, wins with uh, a large, much larger number. We have KDE. One thing uh, maybe worth noting is um, when we prepare the survey, we really put uh, answers as some of us were thinking about the different variants. So I was uh, adding the variants basically based on my understanding of the system and being not very deep in the desktop environment cases, I, I missed a lot of the interesting variants which people added. So for example, the sway uh, as an answer was added in the other field of a survey, which may impact the numbers there, but it was added like 
right enough time to be added to this graph in the end so the sway is now here and yeah this maybe uh, we, we can compare using sway with mate or with cinnamon or with i3 uh, vm uh, wm uh, in this case so uh, also looks interesting for me let's move on to the next slide and that's your preferred media player this was targeting the desktop users uh, the desktop user uh, users uh, once you when you filled the survey you were uh, able to skip the desktop section as a whole but if you decided to answer it if there was a question there and the interesting fact is that VLC wins as media player while VLC is not actually a Fedora package is a package in the RPM fusion I mean it's not a surprise probably but I think it's good to know that yeah we still have most of our media players coming from RPM fusion thank you Miro MPV is also the RPM fusion things and uh, we can see that um, RPM Fusion is still important and uh, covers the needs of the media players for our contributors and users. And we can go to the next slide, uh, which I think is also quite interesting. Again, some of the variants were provided as possible um, answers. Some of them were uh, added to the other field. And yeah, Mira, uh, hello to you. <laughs> Python wins. Uh, Probably not surprising. We also have C, C++, JavaScript, Java, Go, Rust. I apologize to like all the Ruby PHP fans and others who I forgot to, to add in the, in the list. It was honest mistake. I didn't mean anything bad about it. Though we got some answers about PHP uh, in the other field, which said like, uh, sadly PHP or like unfortunately PHP, but uh, I hope you guys still enjoy coding PHP on Fedora. Uh, and also I had a bit of a thinking about Ansible and Puppet in that list because, you know, it's not really programming language, but with the way world is going, I decided we keep it there because uh, yeah, programming in YAM is a thing now, and we probably <laughs> should keep it on the list. So this is how our distribution of languages looks like now, and it would be interesting to see how it evolves over time. I think we can go yeah to next steps. Uh, the next steps uh, for this particular survey results would be uh, to publish community blog article with more detailed explanation. Uh, we also want to maybe have a Fedora podcast with the highlights of the survey. We will definitely publish, publish this sanitized data, data set uh, with the answers. We probably will remove all the freeform comments, but uh, leave the um, fields which are like yes or no in, in, in the, the types of packages, um, um, languages and so on. And we definitely need to run the survey again. We learned a lot from doing it this time, this first time. It was not easy. We learned about design. We learned about the content. And as you see, there are like many still mistakes in the questions themselves and the way how we stated and the variants which we suggested as, as a, as a uh, possibility for the answers. So I would really... In, try the next time to bring the questions before running survey to more public discussion. We, we did it in, a, in public, but we didn't do like wide announcements for asking people to review these questions more in a wider audience. I think the next time we would do that uh, better. And yeah, maybe Marie, uh, back to you to for the- Sure. Yeah, um, I would agree. There's definitely room for improvement on on how our process, basically. I think we have a, a better understanding of how a lot of the different pieces will work, but um, I'm interested to see what folks do with this data and what it might, you know, instigate for people. Like maybe we could change the question like this or that. Um, the real, um, barrier to improvement is people time resources uh alexandra and i probably could have 
totally beasted this thing and made it amazing if we had all of the time that we would love to invest in it. So if there are more people interested in getting involved in the development of it, I mean, it's, it's pretty much ready to be improved as it is. Um, and uh, as Alexandra mentioned, we're going to be publishing the data for folks to, to play with and figure out. I did see uh, Miro that you asked if they're going to be available for download and the answer is yes. So you'll probably see that on the community blog. Um, so yeah, I don't see any other questions in the Q&A, but I'm wondering if folks are holding them for us. Um, I, I also want to add a comment that I am really thankful to the community who participated. I mean, this was a survey, like obvious first attempt, which had some issues in, in, inside, but we really got so many responses, which made this whole effort like to, to make, make it made sense. Now, with this amount of, of results and so on, uh, we now realize that this is actually the thing which we can use and we can um, really get some valuable information out of it. And I'm, I'm glad that people were able to provide the feedback and like help us on the way rather than just complain or ignore this. This is uh, this means that um, having this as a first try was a good thing. We we, we will uh, do it better next time and we should do it next time. Yeah, that, that's, yeah. I, guess I realized we didn't care. put in an overall satisfaction rating in there, but I believe it's 4.23, did we not, I don't think we got that one in there. Um, and a lot of the, you know, answers in the, you know, what do you want to tell Fedora kind of thing at the end was that people love the friends and love the community and think that um, we're doing an amazing job. So seeing that feedback uh, on its own was, was pretty cool to see. Of course, there's the flavor <laughs> that's mixed in uh, between all of that, but, um, yeah. Yeah. Was, I, 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 awesome. Maybe maybe worth also saying. Uh, like there were comments, negative comments, and and this is okay. This doesn't mean like we we feel bad about it. We, there should be comments which complain, and there should be com com comments like this. We listen to them and we try to address them as well. So there, there were some comments about uh, the uh, code of conduct also with negative uh, uh, opinions. We think that it can be resolved and addressed and we will we will do something about it yeah so i think it's it's really a show as a, as a, as a good tool to to uh have this feedback and and the the uh, to to listen to the community in this anonymous way i think um and maybe like Matthew you can add on that i think Matthew you already used some of the data from the survey in your talk as well so you see like there were different applications also Cool. I think I see we have another question. Um, yeah, will Stuart, you ask uh, networking mm -hmm. questions? Uh, th this is also like an interesting uh, conversation we had about the survey. Is what is the scope of this survey? Like, what kind of questions we want to have there? Uh, for example, like when, when I'm asking uh, which uh, languages you use. It, it kind of makes sense because it's it's Fedora content and we can understand like how many users of which Fedora packages are present in the community. When I'm uh, thinking about networking, uh, it can be related to Fedora or like maybe we, we, we can have a conversation about it. Like how, how do you see the impact of this question on Fedora community? what do you want to get from this information related to the community? Because uh, what I would uh, avoid is just asking generic question about people's lives or work or whatever, if it's not relevant to us in some way. Networking can be relevant, right? We, we can consider what, what we set up by default on Fedora work, Workstation, so this is a good question. But uh, we we should have this conversation about new questions and I would be willing to have this conversation uh, with anyone who has ideas. So look, bring them in and we will discuss it. I think an important thing came up in the chat. Um, somebody asked about asking for people's countries. 
which honestly is data that we would love to have, but we do not want to touch. <laughs> um, so there's personally identifying information, and that is something that we're pretty, we pretty much are avoiding at all costs um, because that's very sensitive data and it comes with more responsibilities to handle. So we actually don't, we would ideally would be nice to know those types of things, but uh, the resource to manage the, the other part of it is really not there. So that might, I, if Red Hat were ever to wanna know more and get involved in the survey, if it was, we were really getting some interest, right, they might potentially put some resources into it. Um, but otherwise, it's going to be us. Yeah. So. Yeah, it, it's, I think it's not even about a personally identifying info, but it's also about an information which can trigger certain, like, deep and <laughs> complex conversations which we are not ready to have. So we need to be careful about about sensitive topics here and, and, and think a little bit about uh, is this data is really useful for us as a project or we just collect it to trigger some unhealthy conversations which we won't be able to manage normally. And uh, Miro, I, I totally agree with your comment. I mean, uh, that uh, the question on what you use right now and also like what contributors use right now doesn't really reply uh, answer the question what should be the default uh, for the next release and so on so it's it's not um, it's not a direction like how do uh, to answer these questions for like engineering committee or for console so uh, it was just an attempt to collect data and then we may think how to how to interpret it and and how to deal with this so for example, what, what I said, like, I would be interested in the trend. So to compare the data of this year, while Vim is still, uh, like, was uh, the most, mostly default for the last year, um, to the next year and, and see how it changes. It would be interesting results for me and, and things like that. Cool. Well, we are right at the top of our session time. So thanks, everybody coming and hanging out and keep an eye out on the community blog for some updates and the data the download question oh, oh yeah we're going to make it available it's not quite ready yet <laughs> so it, it will be coming and i'll make sure to to uh, send you a link Miro. you got it cool all right thanks again bye everybody <laughs>